G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As we continue the off-season series I'm doing where I go through each team in the league and I project what their best 22 might look like in three years time. Now the process of this particular exercise is to go through and see which players are not going to be on the list in three years and therefore what is their best 22 likely to look like? Obviously not allowing for the possibility of trades or draft picks in that time. So I suppose the purpose of it is to get a feel for the list profile of a given club, but also to see what their list strengths and weaknesses are likely to be in three years time. If you're unaware, I've been doing this as a playlist series uh, from uh, the Western Bulldogs, and I'm gonna make my way all the way through to the Adelaide Crows. All of this content is organized into a playlist on the channel called uh, AFL Teams in Three Years. And if you're unaware, I have another playlist called uh, Team Based Videos for 2024, where I look at every team in the league and I give their likely best 22 for next year and an immediate forecast as to how 2024 might go. So today we are doing the Melbourne Football Club's best 22 in three years. And uh, if you're unaware, I did do a Melbourne video for 2024, uh, which I'll put as a link uh, that way. You can click on that link and uh, find the video. I really hope I'm pointing in the right direction. But without further ado, let's get into the Melbourne Football Club. So the first part of this process, as always, is to go through the list and work out which players are unlikely to be there in three years, which is, of course, speculation, but that's all we've got at this point in time. So. Uh, I've gone through and picked out quite a few players that were likely to be too old in three years' time to still be playing AFL football. Jake Melksham at 35, Max Gorn at 35, Stephen May at 35. All of these ages are by round one of the 2027 season. Tom McDonald and Ben Brown will be 34. I've also taken them out of this particular exercise. Adam Tomlinson at 33. Jack Viney will be 32, but turning 33 that year. I probably are on the side of retirement for him. Lockie Hunter will be 32. And Shane McAdam uh, will be turning 32 that year. So all of those players are likely to be retired. Obviously, there's a chance that I'm wrong on some of those. Before we criticize that idea too much, let's talk about the players that will be over 30 and still on the list, which is obviously a significant factor here. So I'll go through the players that I've still got available on the list that are over 30 specifically. Jack Billings will be 31, Christian Salem, Christian Petrarca, Alex Neil Bullen, Ed Langdon, Joel Smith, Jake Lever, Marty Hoare, Angus Brayshaw, all 31 at round one of the 2027 season. So there's a lot of players born around like early 96, late 95, which is kind of odd. Uh, but yeah, when you consider that's how many nine or 10 players there that are over 30 still on the list, it kind of justifies a lot of those other retirements. So uh, what I learned doing this is that Melbourne, uh, obviously they don't have an old list, but it's an aging list. And in three years time, there's going to be a potential real drop off in experience, which they need to bear in mind. But that being said, they have taken uh, two first round draft picks this year, so I'm sure they're aware of that. So with that all in mind, let's talk about what I think the best 22 could look like in three years. And I say best 22, I really mean best 24. Uh, so I've, I've fleshed out the bench there a little bit uh, to broaden the analysis slightly. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get the, the best 22 up on the screen now. And as you can see, uh, it's, it's a bit going on. So first of all, what do the colors mean? The colors indicate the extent to which I'm confident they'll still be in uh, the best 22 three years from now. If they're green, it means I'm pretty confident they will be. If they're yellow, it means I'm less confident. That's pretty much as deep as it goes. The numbers are a little bit more interesting. The first number that you see there is their age by round one of the 2027 season. And the second number there is actually the amount of games played that I forecast they will have played. Okay, so the, the rough idea of how I've done that is if they're a best 22 player, over a three year period, I estimate they'll play about 60 games, allowing for injury and suspension. If they're a fringe player, slightly less. If they're a developing tall, for instance, even less, but they're just rough estimates, not too much to worry about, other than this helps us sort of project how experienced and mature a best 22 or 24 is going to be in three years. So let's talk about the D specifically and their back line. So their back line looks fairly settled. I will say that I've put Harrison Petty back there because in the absence of Stephen May, I don't know if, uh, well, I don't think they have a ready-made key back. They've got a few prospects on the list, uh, which I can name for you. I think there's like, uh, Jed Adams, there's Josh Shackey could still be one. That being said, I, I do think Petty as a natural key back probably is the best fit for that. But again, if he makes a name for himself as a key forward, this could look a little bit different. And, uh, the fact that they have Jefferson on the list makes me think maybe they shift Petty back, but I could be wrong on that. Demons fans, let me know in the comments what you think that will happen there. 
Uh, but Petty and Lever will still be on the list, although, you know, Petty's still only 27, Lever will be 31 in this scenario. Uh, Salem and Rivers as the halfback flankers, obviously Rivers will probably start to approach his prime there. Bit of talk, Rivers maybe transitioned into a midfielder. Maybe that happens, but uh, for the time being, I've got him on the back flank there with Salem as the veteran there. Judd McVie, we saw great signs from this year, and I think projects as a long-term player, and I like him there as that kind of intercept medium-sized player, and Jake Bowie as well also makes this team with about 100 games of experience. So, you know, the back line's looking pretty good uh, three years from now, I would say. Uh, let's talk about the center line. Now, Clayton Oliver is 29 and will turn 30 this year, so that kind of adds to this idea that there's a lot of maturity at Melbourne. At least there will be in three years and there's going to be a transition, as you'd expect. It's just something to be aware of. Uh, the wingman, I've gone for Langdon as a 31-year-old, still on one wing, and Caleb Windsor. I think his best position is probably on a wing, uh, but whether he becomes a more inside-leaning midfielder, sure. But he's going to be competing with guys like Christian Petrarca, who will still be playing uh, maybe more as a forward uh, by this point in time, but still with stints on the ball, and Angus Brayshaw shifts into a bit more of a genuine on-ball position. So the midfield looks pretty strong, although it does still rely on Petrarca and Oliver um, as 30 to 31 year olds, but, but as you expect, I, I still think those guys will be going okay at that age. So it's still a, a pretty strong midfield, I would say. The forward line. Uh, now, I've gone for the two key forwards of Jacob Van Royen and Matthew Jefferson. Van Royen looks like he's probably going to be a bit of a jet, that has to be said. Jefferson yet to play a game. I estimate he's going to play about 25 games in the next three years. Again, it's a little bit of a projection that's hard to, to get right, but he's probably the one that, um, having not played a game, I'm going to put him in yellow. So. Uh, Cosie Pickett still at 25, probably starting in his prime there. Bailey Fritch will be 30, but um, you know, still well and truly capable of being a very good medium forward at the age of 30. Neil Bullen's there. I've got Colton Falstrup as the other half forward there, so that makes sense. So you know, fairly a fairly good looking 22, I would say so far. Uh, the ruck situation is one that will need to be addressed, and I've got Will Verrill there because he's the actually the actually the only pure ruck on the list, other than Max Gorn. I've got Tom Fullerton on the bench there. Is he more of a ruck forward? I'm not too sure. In reality, you know, if he can play ruck, he, he would be there instead of Will Verrill. But I just went for the more pure ruck in Will Verrill, but you could switch those around. Regardless, I think Melbourne will be uh, needing to trade in a ruckman whenever it happens that Max Gorn decides he's retiring from AFL. So, um, you know, Max Gorn could still be playing at 35, but I thought it would be a bit boring if I left in all the veterans. Uh, so I decided to look at what might be the case if Max Gorn's not there anymore. So the bench is then full of guys like Fullerton, Spargo. Spargo, I think I've got in yellow there. Uh, whether he should be green, he probably could be. I suppose maybe I didn't have him in green because of the competition for spots there. Um, I've got Tom Sparrow still on the bench, but in green. I think he will still be a best 22 player at 26. Uh, I'm pretty confident about that. Joel Smith, you know, he looks like a handy type. He's a bit of a third tall back. Um, he's about 191 centimeters but in yellow because he will be 31 at that point. Blake Howes, again, uh, he went pick 39 in the 21 draft, I want to say. Hasn't played a game yet, naturally will stay in yellow, uh, but one I'm sure the Ds will hope finds his potential. The same thing with Taj Woden. I think he's played a handful of games, uh, but I've largely unproven as a young midfielder there. So overall, even with like seven to 10 retirements or whatever it was I had for the Ds here, it's still a strong looking 22. However, it will need some key reinforcements. So a lot does rest on Jefferson at least making the grade at AFL level if he can be a decent one-two punch with Van Ruyen. They're sound there, their back line will be sound, the midfield will be decent. I think it could use a little bit of support coming up from within uh, below, rather. And the ruck situation is a gaping hole that the Ds need to address, that's for sure. Now, outside of the 22, um, I left out someone like a Jack Billings just because I'm not too sure. Um, you know, after preparing this video, I did read an article that he's impressing at preseason. I kind of refuse to take into account what people are saying about people tearing it up on the track. Uh, so he could still well and truly be in his best 22, and I could be wrong, but he will be uh, 31 turning 32 in this particular year. Cade Chandler is also a player that didn't quite make the cut for me. The only next midfielder I have out of this team is Keenan Brown, who was just rookie listed through the father-son process as well, son of Nathan Brown. Um, and I don't know a whole heap about him, but nonetheless, probably drafting more midfielders is a, midfielders is a non-negotiable there. Uh, Bailey Laurie as well has played a little bit at AFL level. I just had him just outside this 24. And same thing with guys like Marty Hoare, Josh Shackey, uh, Daniel Turner, Jed Adams. Just didn't quite make the cut for this particular team. But, it, you know, that team, considering the amount of outs for the Ds potentially over the next three years, uh, that's still a fairly strong team. Mind you, at this point in time, they're then looking and thinking, wow, this team's a little bit old. But by then, they will have had, you know, new draft picks and, and stuff to consider. So I'd say a genuine ruck 
whether it be drafted or traded in. Um, maybe they should go for Braden Pruce or Luke Jackson. Obviously reinforcing the midfield so there's a transition period after you know guys like Viney and uh, Petrarca have moved on because this team maybe is a little bit on the older side. They could still win a premiership uh, that really relies on what they do in the next three years for sure. But overall, a pretty well-rounded team. Uh, naturally, if, if Harrison Petty stays as a forward and that, and that works successfully, then maybe Jefferson becomes more of a third tall forward that may or may not be suited to more to his game anyway from memory. And then they would just need a draft to keep back. So overall, they're looking in pretty good shape. Uh, be interesting to plot the development of guys like Trent Rivers. Does he become more of a midfield uh, option there? Or does he stay as that sort of medium-sized defender? I'm not too sure. Tom Sparrow as well. Does he become a genuine on-baller? I think he has that potential from looking from the outside, but I'm not too sure either. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the, the window that Melbourne have to win premierships is arguably while Petrarca and Oliver are still firing as a duo. They could survive a little bit without Max Gorn, um, as provided they get someone decent in as a ruck option, but their midfield on paper uh, looks very, very strong in general, and their backline again looks sound, and that we know that's the strength of them now, and there's likely to still be a strength of theirs in three years. So anyway, guys, that is my take on the Melbourne Football Club. Um, yeah, a bit more of an old the list than I uh, had anticipated. I, I didn't realize that, you know, in three years we'd see Alex Neil Bullen at 31. Like, I, I feel like that guy just got drafted. But let me know in the comments what you agree with or disagree with, particularly D's fans. I'm sure you guys know your uh, reserve players better than I, so help fill in the gaps for me and uh, I'd be interested to hear from you guys in particular. But otherwise, hope you enjoy the content and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.